It's so rare for me to see like-minded people collaborating together and scratching their heads, trying to figure out what they're gonna do next. We're making a hot spring, but we're not doing it like you would like we do it in somebody's yard. We're doing it just for looks right now, right? So we're just trying to make this functional. I'm super excited to see the way this thing all comes together, and I can only imagine so is everybody else. Yeah. Including yourselves. <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Uh -huh. I got some new boots. New, like, so big things are gonna happen today. <laughs> <laughs> What is up everybody? Chris at Team Aquascape again with Dan Harp from Mark the Pond Guy. We are at day three. So Dan, give us a heads up as to what you're thinking. Yeah, so kick starting here at day three. We're rocking and rolling over here. I'm about to start this waterfall section which I wanted to get to last night. Everything worked out great yesterday. I'm about ready to set the first couple rocks. We're gonna build up as high as we can get with the, with the elevation and the stone size is kind of limited so we kind of base the sizing off of that as well. I'd like to make this like a nice multiple falls cascade, not a single sheet or anything. Just kind of natural cascading so we should, we've got some nice rocks for that should be able to make that look pretty cool we're splitting up into two sections today dad and ed will be here later they're going to start on the hot spring area so the aquascape team is going to start in this landscape area here we're going to make like a like a walkway through the forest effect here and then once this stuff's buttoned up we just start working our way back cool the and that's where that seam's going to come into place because yeah. we're going to wrap that streams all the way back around back behind where the machine is now yeah, just to give the illusion that this stream and trout river was here yep prior to building the houses so. And also what's cool is that pathway that leads you across the pond leads you over to the shed But then once you get over there, you'll realize that there's another waterfalls yeah, yeah. over there as well, right? So, so from, this, from the shed area you have a really cool view downstream. Yep. You can't see any waterfalls so We're gonna make a nice waterfall over here. We're gonna make a, a medium-sized waterfall here And then I want to do like a dripping moss rock wall cool. effect So which is like a natural spring kind of like. Yep. And then the river will continue around the corner. Cool. And then that'll just disappear. Yeah, it'll just, just give the illusion that it keeps on going. It's limited space, and that's what we got. Awesome. Awesome. This is what it's all about for us guys working together as a team doing the edges This is some of the stuff we will learn from modern designs John Adams in April Matt coming in packing the dirt in really really tight into this area here And then if we come back now with a foam gun and foam this little joint right here Then I can bring the soil right up to this this little area I could put more foam in if I wanted to or just come in and do a little bit of gravel I think the key is not to make it look monotonous and do the same type of edge all over the place the other area Matt let's show them that little fold you just did that little accordion fold this is really really important these accordion folds so you always want to make sure that all of this stays up high if this were to dip down then we get a leak so it still looks like the liners high but this fold dips down another inch so we always want to make sure that stuff stays up high the other key thing with the edges doing exactly what Matt and Ryan are doing and working as a team it works so much more efficiently when you can have one guy holding the liner and then another guy moving the soil back in like that awesome job guys Okay. <laughs> it's so rare for me to see like-minded people collaborating together and scratching their heads, trying to figure out what they're gonna do next. But I couldn't help but notice Mark and Dan over here kind of scratching their heads, trying to figure out what to do next. Guys, not to put you on the spot, but what the hell is going on? <laughs> we're making it up. As yeah, we go. that a boy. Yeah. Well, we're making it look like we know what we're doing. Oh, wow. That's yeah. the key. Fake it till you can't, right? So the challenge here is we're, we're making a hot spring, but we're not doing it like you would like we do it in somebody's yard we're doing it just for looks right now right so we're just trying to make this 
functional. It's gotta last a couple days. It's gotta last a couple days. And we're really not gonna see any of this in here. We're gonna have aeration and fog and steam. We're trying to make it stay is all we're trying to do. So this is kind of the shape and then on top of this, yeah, so on like top, yeah, we'll, we're gonna, we're gonna set some more boulders and some boulders, flagstone. And make the top look realistic. And so normally if you guys were to do this, this would actually be all granite. carefully placed granite, yeah, exactly. aqua blue yeah. boulder, strategically placed for steps and that kind of stuff, for seats, yeah, et cetera, exactly. et cetera. Maybe a lot like some of that slate work back yeah. there behind you, tucked yeah. in here and there. But yeah, I think for this application, this works really easy. It gets us deep fast, yep. right? So we're at 30 inches, I think, yeah, 32 we're gonna, inches. We're gonna set boulders on top of this, so we'll, we're gonna be nice and deep. I'm super excited to see the way this thing all comes together and I can only imagine so is everybody else yeah. including yourself get in you could jump in yeah this, this whole feature is turning out pretty amazing yeah I, I'm yeah. really loving it I, I like how everybody has their own definition of natural but everybody can agree that a trout stream is, is natural well, I would say this, like, so everybody's got their own opinion on natural, but if our crew, myself, Chris, could take a note from you guys, because you kind of live it on a daily basis, you know, we live in Illinois, and I think we have a waterfall someplace in Illinois, and that's about it. I'm not even sure exactly where it's at, but we have corn and a city, and so natural for us would probably be a lot of corn, right? So this is awesome that you guys are here. I think our whole crew is learning a bunch. The way you gave them direction on some of the edging over there and the ground gravel swath makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. They're I, definitely utilizing a lot of that moss you brought in, so oh, yeah. we'll probably have to keep an eye on that before it's all gone. We definitely have a piece of the, piece of the Northwest. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. We'll keep moving away with this. And if you haven't noticed, uh -huh. I got some new boots. New, like, so big things are gonna happen today. <laughs> <laughs> So the waterfall is 95% complete up here and it looks freaking awesome. We ran into not really a challenge, but just kind of one of those points in the design where you've got to make a decision. And it was picking out this frame rock that's going to frame out the top waterfalls, right? So go ahead and walk me through what happened. One of the issues we ran into was the size of rock available for this project. That rock behind you over there is the largest rock. It kind of stands out on its own. So we have to balance it out with something. So we didn't have another rock and we have this cluster of trees here. So it only makes sense to use a nice, nice stuff like this. We found the right stuff. And the cool thing about working with rocks and wood, you, you can, can manipulate them. You can them. manipulate them, yeah. People think they're rocks, but they are right there. I mean, you can break them, stuff, you can cut them. It's just like an artist working with paint. You just paint a different color or whatever, chip the rock, do whatever you want to do. So in this case, we have to cut the stuff, it's going to stuff roots back to make our liner, to get our liner in the right place to contain the water. Easy enough, we'll just cut this back, fill a little dirt behind it, and call it good. So I think I think what you're what you're doing is and you do it super well. It's incorporating. We've seen it throughout your water feature where you're incorporating the wood elements in, mixing it in with the stone yep. only in strategic spots, right? right. And, and occasionally we have to modify the wood to make it right. fit because you have to have it functional, right. but you also don't want to sacrifice your artistic vision either. So yeah, yeah. So the wood adds such a cool element that's not there. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's obviously in nature, it's natural. So being able to find where it makes sense and where it works, but not overdoing it. In this case, we're actually using a lot of wood to compensate for the lack of rock, which by doing so now we have extra rock, so we're gonna, this side over here is gonna be cool. <laughs> but it kind of all has to make sense. Like this stump goes with this grove of trees, the log jam down there goes in the corner of the stream where you would naturally find the log jam where it turns. Yep. Stuff like that. So, and it just adds to the effect, which makes it look more, more natural. So what Dan's gonna do now is he's basically just gonna modify the root flare on this stump so that we can get it to sit down properly and so that we can also get that liner up high like he was saying so that we don't develop a leak over here. But what this is going to do is it's gonna frame out this top waterfalls, which is gonna have a boatload of water coming through it. Yeah, and all, but also balance out the visual look of that rock over there. So just giving that visual balance makes it look believable. Awesome. Well, let's get cutting and get slamming it in. All right. There's 
that cedar stump that we were just talking about and how it's going to incorporate in there. This is going to be the headwaters for this waterfall. We didn't want it lower than these rocks because it's framing out the water for these spill stones in through here. We'll get a few rocks back behind it just to scale down the height of this. But what this does is the height of this ends up scaling down this large rock. That's that big four footer that we put in initially. It scales down this big rock and it just makes sense all in through here. And then we'll plant this really heavily with our evergreens to give it stick with that north woods rustic feel that Dan's going for. So you're doing great, man. You're doing nice. great today. And then we've got Micho over here. He's going to be putting in some power heads. All right, Micho. Being that we're building a trout stream, current highly oxygenated water, high velocity is a key ingredient to a thriving trout habitat. Explain to me what you're doing. Show me what you got there and so how these are working in. Pound power head here in my hand. So the reason for these pound power heads is to create more velocity for the trout and make it a more ideal environment. Ideal environment for the fish. As Micho so eloquently put, <laughs> You can see how he's hiding these pond power heads, just stuffing them back in some of these nooks and crannies in through here. Now these are low voltage operated systems. You don't have to worry about having another pump, but they're an excellent way to increase circulation or current in certain pond applications. So because those rainbow trout love that highly oxygenated water, fast moving current, these are very fast moving river system fish. These are going to just add to the amount of flow getting pushed back towards the pump vault area. So Mito's got to finish disguising these so you don't even know that they're there but the fish will definitely know because you're gonna see them playing around in these areas and swimming against the water being pushed out away from these pond power heads so we've got one there you see we've got some lighting in underneath here and then I believe we've got another one over here worked in through the unique rock work down over through there that's that one that Micho was talking about underneath that stepper and then Matt do you have another one going in over here as well I do have one going right underneath this stump all right it'll get some nice flow going through these root flares it'll be a cool effect maybe we'll get some lights in here. Cool. Get a nice ripple up against the trunk. It'll be awesome. These are kind of those unseen things that, that you do to just really kick this ecosystem over the top and elevate the design, really making it true to that rainbow trout deep stream that we were talking about. That's why Matt and Micho are working down here in the pond. Looks like Corey's finishing up some of the lighting cable. Again, going through and detailing everything so you don't even know the light cables are there. Again, guys and girls, out there, this is what separates the true artists and masters of their craft from everybody else. Everybody can build water features, but it takes a level of craftsmanship and a high level of mastery to be able to understand these things. So hopefully our videos are helping teach you and guide you through some of the learning curve that we've encountered over the years of doing this. Dan has been doing this since he was about seven years old. His dad's been in business since 95 or six or something. They've been around a long time. They've worked through a lot of this. There's a reason they're at the level that they are. There's a reason that these guys are the incredible team that they are but it's these little things that are separating it from being good to being absolutely fantastic i love the fact that we're incorporating some of our other products not just using pumping water to create that velocity but we're also using the pond power heads which are a relatively new product to the aquascape product line so if you haven't checked them out and you've got some dead spots in your pond or some static areas try them out you will not have to modify your plumbing your existing plumbing at all you just drop them in hook them into a low voltage transformer and you're all set ready to go Yeah, man, rolling up another one. Yeah, man, rolling up another one.